Have you noticed that you're getting up more at night to pee or the pressure of your stream is weaker? Perhaps you're noticing that you're rushing to the toilet and you're going more frequently than you used to. If this is the case, it's possible that you have BPH or benign prostatic hyperplasia. This is an age-related process that causes growth of your prostate. It can occlude your bladder and cause bothersome urinary issues. Hi, my name is Dr. Charles Chabert. I'm a urologist and the director of the Prostate Clinic located here on the Gold Coast in Australia. The following video really is to highlight a couple of minimally invasive treatment options that I'd like you to be aware of before you choose your definitive treatment, should your doctor have said to you that you've got BPH. If you get value from this video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel. We try to provide you regular up-to-date content with regards to everything related to your prostate and treatment solutions for issues that you may experience. Okay, so a quick overview. BPH is that benign enlargement to your prostate. It is more common as we progress through life and around 50% of men in their 60s will have some growth to the prostate. As mentioned previously, growth of the prostate does cause obstruction to the bladder. The prostate itself is shaped a little bit like a donut. There's a hole in the middle, it's called the urethra, and we pee through this tube. As the prostate increases in size, it causes obstruction of this tube, and men can notice that their flow is weaker and they have an increase in frequency. They get up more at night to pee, which can be a, a real problem in terms of overall well-being. And they can even notice that they start rushing or going more frequently to the toilet in the daytime. There are a couple of relatively new minimally invasive treatment options available for men to try and manage this situation. One of those is called ITIND and the other one is called Urolift. What I wanted to do today was to highlight the pros and cons of these different pathways so that that might help you in your journey deciding if you're suitable for these and which pathway you might choose. So ITIND, ITIND is the newer of the two. ITIND basically is a procedure that involves deploying a small little basket inside the prostate. That, pro that basket is inserted there in Australia under a general anesthetic, and the basket basically sits inside the prostate. The aim of that basket really is to provide some outward pressure internally inside the prostate with a view that it reshapes or remolds that internal tube in the prostate to create some internal scarring that holds the tube open. A urolift, in essence, is a bit like a medical staple. Again, it's a procedure in Australia which is performed in the operating room under a general anesthetic. It's performed with a telescopic camera that's inserted uh, inside the prostate and small little clips are deployed internally with a view that the obstructing tissue of the prostate is compressed and retracted away from the urethra to try and relieve some of the obstruction. Now, there will be some subtleties between what's done, say, for example, in the US, here in Australia, and in Europe. And I do know from my time in the States that in America, far more procedures tend to be done under local anesthetic in an office-based setting, whereas here in Australia, we tend to do things in the operating room under a general anesthetic. There are pros and cons to those two different pathways, and that information is kind of beyond the scope of this uh, discussion today. If you've had either one of these procedures and you'd like to share your experience, please drop a comment below and let us know your thoughts. Okay, so one of the key differences between ITIND and Urolift. As I said, ITIND aims to reshape the prostate with a temporary device. It's inserted, men are discharged with this device internally. A small little thread is attached onto the end of the device, which uh, extends externally and is kept in place for around five to seven days after the procedure. Men then return back to the hospital, have the device removed, and really an immediate improvement can be expected beyond that time. Urolift inserts permanent clips. So these permanent staples are inserted into the prostate to withdraw the tissue and those implants become integrated into the prostate tissue and they really stay there longer term. 
Okay, so key differences at number two. Well, the duration of treatment. So an eye tin, as I said, the, the, the implant is put in, it's kept there for a week and then removed, but there's no permanent implant there. With Urolift, men are treated, certainly in Australia or under a general anaesthetic, the clips are put in place, and the majority of men can go home on the same day after their treatment. They don't require a catheter. They can expect immediate improvement. Eye tin compresses tissue and causes scarring without a permanent implant, whilst as Urolift mechanically displaces the tissue. The similarity between the two is actually that no tissue is removed. So as distinct from, say, something like a TURP or a green light laser prostatectomy, there is no physical removal of prostate tissue. Recovery time for both is pretty quick. With eye tinned, men can have a little bit of discomfort and a bit of irritation that may require some oral medications to control. And Urolift, really, the downtime is pretty minimum. Men can experience a little bit of pressure sensation behind their scrotum in their perineum that, once again, is relatively short-lived. Suitability for the two treatments differs slightly, and there are some technical considerations that really come down to the shape of the prostate that influence who is suitable for which treatment. So, for example, eye tinned can be suitable for men if they've got a higher bladder neck or a very small median lobe, whereas men who are suitable for Urolift, in my experience, are more appropriate if they have a smaller sized prostate, their obstruction is coming from the sides of the prostate and there's no protrusion into the bladder. Both of these treatments are pretty minimally invasive and they're about as minimally invasive as we can get with definitive treatment. In my experience, when we look at a range of treatments from most minimally invasive to maximally invasive, there are trade-offs along the way. And crudely speaking, when we are at the more minimally invasive end of the spectrum, the probability of retreatment is greater than we when we look at more maximally invasive treatments that provide a greater degree of durability with regards to the outcome that we can expect. So to summarize, both ITIND and Urolift, they're minimally invasive treatment options. There is a subtle difference between who is suitable for each of those treatments. The best way to determine if you're suitable for either of these really is to have a chat with your treating physician and find out uh, where your suitability lies. I hope this uh, video provided you some answers to questions that you may have had. If you've got more questions, please leave them in the comments section below. I hope you're well. Take care of your prostate.